I'm still building on one point from the very onset of the first session of this camp. I, begin, I began to explicate on the subject of the burdens of God, how that your life is important to God, how that there is a plan that was the purpose of your existence. And I began to further discuss that it is possible for you not to fulfill that plan. Even though that plan is very beautiful, God needs that plan done, but God's not going to force you into it. God needs your partnership. At best, He can stretch His arm, but you have to receive His arm and say, Yes, sir, I'm willing to work with you. I also make the point that when you want to say, I'm willing to work with you and get the plan fulfilled, it's not something you say with your mouth in one emotional moment in the service. To say, Father, I'm willing to walk with you, I'm willing to do this and do that. That's not how it works. There is a certain order of life you have to subscribe to. And on account of the fact that you live in that way, you are going to fulfill destiny. Fulfilling destiny is not a rocket science. Finding purpose is not such a big thing, actually. Believe what I'm telling you. The only problem is that you want to have an 18 hour long vision where the Holy Ghost comes with that brother and says, Thou art my beloved son, Christ the Apostle. We are looking for the spectacular and we are not promised the spectacular. However, if you keep walking with Jesus and obeying every emphasis and instruction he brings per time, you will be sure to fulfill the goals. First, he has, you have to be born again. Second, you have to submit to a disciple. Someone has to disciple you. Even if you are Babalola times seven, someone has to uh, disciple you. In this kingdom, nobody is self-made. In this kingdom, nobody is self-discipled. Not even Paul. So you don't deceive yourself with Paul. Say, Paul, John studied the Bible, he saw mystery. Say, no, but no, sir. Paul was baptized by somebody. Paul was taught the primary and basic things of the gospel by somebody. Paul was introduced to the basics by somebody. Then he was already acquainted with the Old Testament. It now gave him greater understanding, greater perspective. Then he now went further to personally study. So you don't say, no, you must be disciple. The disciple's job is to teach you how to best submit to the Holy Ghost. Who is the one you actually need? He will be the one that will take your hand and walk you through destiny. So when you get born again, you submit to a disciple. He will teach you how to submit best to the Holy Ghost. How to order your life. And then you walk with him and it walks you to your destiny. This thing of, that makes you feel that you can actually work with God successfully without being taught is actually pride. You hear me teach and I tell you, I learned this from Pastor Nature, I learned this from Apostle Aaron outside, I learned this from Apostle Gideon Odoma, is to show you that I'm not trying to make it myself look like someone that just was born with knowledge. I was not born, I was taught. I believe God and even if you put a gun to my head, I will be lying to you to tell you that I do not believe in the reality of God. But at first, I was taught. I was taught those things. I was taught that the supernatural is real. And I practiced those things I was taught. And like the apostle John will say, those things which we have heard first, which we have seen, we have looked upon. And it says our hands are handled of the word of life. Now, I can tell you that experientially, I've experienced God to a certain degree. And even if I wanted to backslide, sincerely, still it. I cannot now be an atheist. I will lie to myself. Before I got to this point of conviction, I was taught. There were times where I had not experienced those things, but I was taught. You must be disciples. Moved on to say that God does not want.
want you to be entangled with the world, yes. But God does not want you to stop there. That's one point. God does not want you to be on the defensive alone. God wants you to be the one changing people, pulling them out of the grip of darkness, translating them from darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. On account of that, we now said that you are God's weapon. Do you remember? I'm doing a recap. You remember you are with me? Say amen. amen. We now said you are God's weapon. So God wants to use you as an instrument of bringing his plans and purposes in the earth to come to pass. We said that an axe is made of two components. First, an axe is made of the iron head. And second, an axe is made of the what? The wood. We said that the axe head is symbolic of your inner life because the axe head is gotten from iron. Iron is made of iron ore. And iron ore is, is gotten from, from, from inner earth. So it's symbolic of your private life, your intimacy with the Lord, your personal life, your personal intimacy. And the wood is symbolic of something else. It's symbolic of your outer life. It's symbolic of the edge that God uses in the physical as the platform for you to present the gospel. 